Hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 44 of Authors, Creators, and Visionaries. I'm Elizabeth Lyons, and I am so excited that today I got to talk to my client and now good friend, Frank Lopes, about his book, which came out just a few months ago and is making an incredible impact, The Seven Minute Setup. One of the greatest joys of what I get to do is that I get to learn from amazing people. Sometimes I learn how to manage my emotions differently. Sometimes I learn how to eat differently. Sometimes I learn how to connect with others differently. And sometimes, as was the case in this delightful conversation, I get to learn more about how to organize my ridiculous schedule or what feels like my ridiculous schedule and my ridiculous ridiculous to-do lists that I swear I start every day with eight items and I end with 18. This process that Frank talks about in the seven-minute setup and the process that we're going to talk about today has absolutely changed that for me. I know now that no matter how long or wonky my to-do list is, every single item on it is in support of my long-term goals. And it has truly, over the last year, especially given what the last year has looked like for most of us, it has changed my approach to my business and to my life and had such an incredibly positive impact. I cannot wait for you to learn more about this process. The seven-minute setup is giving me new life. Ooh, please tell. So when we worked on this book originally, I remember thinking, this is such a simple idea, right? We mm-hmm. talked about this. And it's interesting to me how sometimes the most simple ideas are also the most profound. It happens all the time, by the way. We try to overcomplicate everything. Like how many funnels can I create by Friday? Yes, And exactly. if none of those funnels work, let's create another funnel, right? Or five more. Or five more, because surely it'll be one of those. So you told me the concept for this book, and I was like, that seems really simple and yet quite profound. And as we were writing the book, I was going through the process. And I told you not long after the book was published that it was one of the only processes I've ever stuck with. Mm -hmm. You have. And we... I have, but I did take a break, but we're going to talk about that. So I didn't mean to take a break, but 2020 hit. And I mean, what, what day is it? What's my name and what scheduling system am I using to organize my life? And what do I even want in my life? So all this to say that I used it religiously. I used this, this system religiously for about seven months. Then the pandemic hit, everything went haywire. And I kind of fell off the wagon with a lot of things, including this. Mm -hmm. So as I come to the end of 2020, God bless, I thought to myself, self, like it's time to get reorganized. And I grabbed the book and I started in with the seven year plan. And I'm not going to tell everything about how I mean, we could be here for, you know, we're only going to be here for 30 minutes. We would be here for a while to talk through the whole thing. Right. Yes. Yep. But, but you start at the, at the seven year plan. And what I think is so magnificent about this is that it can change whenever you want. So in light of 2020, I wouldn't say that my seven year plan is violently different from what it was maybe a year ago, but it's definitely different. You know, Liz, I was having this conversation with someone yesterday, and it's number one, that's the way that I designed it. It's because life is going to consistently change, whether it be that, you know, you have a death in your family, whether it be that you discover something brand new and you just find your life's calling, you know, and now you're going to go after that. Or maybe you finally find your soulmate and that makes it so that you change your mm-hmm. goals or the Rona comes. <laughs> or the Rona comes. Or the Rona decides to show up, you know, right. in, uh, in March and just totally like, you know, change everything around. So th- that's the beauty. That's the beauty of the system and of the process in the seven minute setup. And it's the fact that it's going to evolve and it's going to change and you're in control of the change all the time. There's so many things that are going on in life, Liz, that we cannot control. 
but at least we can control the way that we react to those things. Right. And by having a plan and a process for your goals and for your life that is constantly working towards your goals, no matter what those goals are. I mean, come on. This has been the right. missing, this has been the missing piece. Agreed. And I think what I have found so valuable, and it's it's interesting because I didn't realize pre pre-COVID, right, that, that I would ever recognize this. I mean, there are so many things we didn't realize we would ever have to recognize. But we are in control of so little, or it feels that way right now. But to be able to look at my seven-year goals, my seven-year vision, and realize that that is something over which I do have control is, I don't know, it just gives me a great sense of... Control. Yeah. And comfort in that. Yeah. Right? And power. And power. And so I told, go ahead. And influence over your own life. And Liz, yes. don't, don't, Liz, don't, do not, don't feel weird. I mean, I keep a, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's me, <laughs> yeah, but it's you. I keep a running, uh, collection of all of my seven year, my seven year vision oh, points. Oh, you do? Yes. And my seven month waypoint goals. Right. And, oh. and from, and I, and as, you know, as described in or, or prescribed, I should say, as prescribed in the book, mm -hmm. every seven months is when you go back and look at your seven year vision and you may want to, and write it out again from scratch. And during right. the process of writing it out from scratch, you may change. You may change some things because seven <laughs> months is enough time for the Rona to come and, yeah. you know, and completely change, uh, completely change your life. And from my seven year vision from it, it's so ironic from March 1st of 2020. And then I rewrote it again on October 13th. That was the next, next time that it, that it came around. Right. So, some of the things are the same. There was two things on here that I accomplished already that I was able to scratch off, but a lot of the measurable goals, mm -hmm. like for example, the amount of time to to have my house paid in full, the amount yeah. of the amount of the amount of money, uh, cash money I want to have in the bank, my annual income, uh, things like that, I increased them all. Oh, really? I increased every one of them and I decreased the time in uh, in being able to achieve other goals. Because oh, you increased the time I, in being able. I gotcha. I gotcha. Right. right. So because I because I saw that I didn't need seven years or I saw that, oh, my God, and I'm just making one up like a million dollars in the bank within the next seven years. Why can't I have seven? Okay. Why can't I have 7 million? What I found so super interesting is that when I first did this, so I've only gone through two iterations now. I've only done the seven year plan twice. The first time I did it, you know, there are seven areas that you have people create a plan for, create a vision for in seven years. I had all seven of those on one page. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I didn't get super detailed. It was like, this is what, this is where I want to live. And this is what my health and my finance, you know, I went through all the seven things, but I didn't get very detailed in any area. And honestly, the reason I didn't is because it felt super overwhelming, but I remember telling you that. And I remember you just, one of the great things about the way that you guide through this is that there's no, well, you, there are a couple of rules. So things have to be written with pen yes, um, and things like that. But beyond that, there's not a lot of criticism, which of course I greatly appreciate, um, of you're doing it wrong. So your comment at the time was, Liz, this is where you are. Fine. See if you can build upon it the next time you do it. And I just did it again. And I've done five of the seven and they're each an entire page. Yes. Yes, because Liz, they're your goals. Yes. How can anybody criticize you and say that your goals are wrong? 
Well, I don't mean that my goals were wrong, but I mean, you didn't say, well, Liz, you need to have written more than that. You need to get more descriptive. You need to be more clear. And I think that a lot of times we hear that. And I don't disagree, by the way. I think that we do have to get very clear about what we want our life to look like. We can't just say, uh, well, we can, but if we just say, for example, I want a big house that, you know, what, what does that mean? So a big house to me is, is different from a big house to you is different from a big house to Elon Musk. Like it's different. And so you, it, in order to put it out there and start working toward it, you have to be able to see it. And if you see it, you can see how many rooms it has and does it have hardwood and what kind of fixtures. And, and for some reason, the first time I did it, all of that detail felt I don't know why it felt so overwhelming. Maybe it felt like I wasn't going to be allowed to change my mind. Or I think that I watched some mindset issues creep in because I said when I first did it, I remember thinking, I want a fireplace in the backyard that opens in two directions. So it's kind of, I don't know how to describe this, but you know, it's open on both sides of the, of the Mm -hmm. chimney, if you will. And I want a fireplace in the master bedroom and keep in mind, I live in Phoenix. So I want a fireplace period is, is a little bit weird, but it is a little chilly here today. It's like 72. Um, and I, yeah, and there was something in the back of my head that just thought that's too much. Like you can't, which was, which was strange to me to have that thought because I didn't realize that I was battling those own, you know, feelings of that's too much. Like you, you know, don't wish for 17 Maseratis. That's too, I don't want a Maserati for the record, but that's too much. But this time when I did it, I wrote all that down. So, I mean, if you read this now, it's, well, it's very inspiring to me, but it's like, wow, that's, that's exciting. And you see that, and Liz, that's great. And hearing you say this makes me so, so, so happy because you actually went through the process. You actually Mm -hmm. worked the process and you worked that process on the way that it was right for you. So the first time looking at it, and this happens with everyone too. You're not, once again, you're not weird when it comes to this, you're not weird. Uh, But, (laughs) you know, but you know, people will start off and a lot of times it's scary to write those big goals down. Sure. It's scary and it and it can be intimidating until you realize that you are the one who's in charge of them. There's also yeah. an accountability factor that gets worked in there where people sometimes they don't want to write those big goals down because mm-hmm. they're going to disappoint themselves because they're not going to reach them or at least they feel that they're not going to reach them That's when they it. write them down. And That's then it. then once they work the plan and once they work the this, this seven minute setup process and they realize act, when actuality, when you put all of your focus on your own goals, it's amazing how much, how many more of them you can accomplish right. and how much easier you can accomplish them. And, and then you that go- they don't all have to be land on the moon. Right. And then you go back mm-hmm. and you're like, oh my God, I undershot that. I could right. make that right. one bigger. Right. Right. What do right. I mean? I only want 14 Maseratis. I could have 50. And, and I'm not and, <laughs> and also it's you know, we talk about it in the book, but making your seven year vision all about material possessions, that's the only place where I'm gonna say you're wrong. Yep. That that's the wrong way to that's the wrong yep. way to do it. And we even, you know, we even speak about in the book about somebody that I coached that their first round of uh their first round of seven year vision goals were all material. And I was like, yeah. nah, 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 back the truck up over there. You know, beep, beep. Well, totally it really wrong. speaks to how our brains work when we think of success. And what I found really interesting, and this is not meant to bring up enough. But when I wrote enough, it was very much about figuring out what my enough was, which correlates so beautifully with this. Because if you don't know what enough looks and feels like to you, it's difficult to do this. So so the seven minute setup is really an effort also in determining what is enough for you. And I think that's why the materialistic stuff rarely makes sense because when someone says, well, I want six Porsches, why? Now, if they can say, because I'm an avid car collector and I like this, that, or the other thing, that may justify the answer. But in most cases, that's not true. 
it's well, because, you know, that will show the world that I've made it when that's right. in fact not the case. And and Liz, we've seen people already go through the process and we've seen people write down that I want a Lambo. I want this. Mm-hmm. I want that. And then after taking it and breaking it down, they realize that no matter what, it's just that their income needs to be at a certain level. And the byproduct of that is that they can buy whatever they want. And then the sure. the second round becomes I have you know I have the freedom to purchase anything I want or need at any time. Correct. A- and then you realize that then that person realizes then that the seven year vision for them is just they just want the freedom to be able to do whatever it is that they want at any time. And that may seem like it's pie in the sky, you know, type of a you know type of a thing, but it, it's it's really not. Well, and that's why I feel as though the doing this reassessing every seven months is so brilliant because if you set a one year, a seven year, a 10 year, a 20 year plan, and you don't ever go back and look at it again, you just park it in the sand and say, this is it. This is why I think so many people actually do reach it or get very close and then are completely miserable because they haven't recognized over the previous 12 years or whatever that their values have changed, their ideals have changed, their goals have changed. They've changed. We grow. You know, we do continue to evolve and we learn new things about ourselves and what we're interested in and who we're interested in. And that changes things. So now all of a sudden, you know, the big house sucks because you've got to dust 16,000 square feet and who wants to do that, right? Or, yeah, or you have whatever. to hire people to vacuum and clean and all this type of stuff that you're like, you're suddenly like, I have all these strangers around me. This is not what I want. This is not what I want. Right. And, and, or, or, you know, I hate to say it again, but we wrote the book, you know, we basically put everything together and we went through the process of all of this in 2019. Starting, you know, the first time we spoke about it, if I remember right, was somewhere around April or May. And mm-hmm. then we were done with draft one probably in December. And right. and, and then the so we wrote it pre, you know, pre COVID. Yeah, yeah. pre Rona. Pre Rona. <laughs> you know, pre Rona time. <laughs> Don't you feel like our whole world has been divided into pre and post? It's like who needs BC and AD anymore? Now we just have pre and post. Who needs the birth of Christ? Right. Right. It's like Rona has taken over everything. Even the modern, it's the modern way of looking at time. uh, uh, Obviously, I don't mean that, but you know, it's just, it's it's just, it's totally, you know, it's totally ridiculous, but it's because it's so hot and because it's literally something. It's it's changed so many things. Yeah. And it's touched everyone. There's nobody on the face of the earth. Nope who is, you know, immune to the Rona or to the byproducts of the Rona. Of it. A hundred percent. And one of the things that actually, and it's interesting because when we talked about this, so one of the areas um, or one of the principles, I would say that was shocking to me because you hear it so infrequently is that when you're putting together your seven month plan, your seven year plan, your weekly plan, what you're going to do every day, all these sorts of things, we don't have to just be focused on the hustle, uh, the hustle and grind, two words I really, along with pandemic and unprecedented that I would like to remove from vocabulary forever, but it doesn't just have to be about work. So family and relationships came come into play too. And I really welcomed that when you put it out there. So you, I know you tell the story in the book about my daughter and my youngest daughter, who's from Ethiopia and how I you know, spend a lot of time figuring out hair products and things like that. And so mm-hmm. you said to me, yeah, Liz, you going to Barnes and Noble when I could to purchase the magazine on taking care of her hair is actually part of you working toward your seven year goal because your goal is to, um, number one, have a great relationship with my daughter and also to provide her with whatever she needs to feel confident and comfortable with herself. That's and right. I thought, well, you know, we tend to think of those things as peripheral, like going to my child's soccer game. Well, that's not, you know, that doesn't count. Right. Because. Oh my it's God. It's so counts. It so counts. It- and then you, you bring about this horrible pandemic And it counts more than ever because if we felt 
excommunicated before. I mean, you know, we have never felt as a society more disconnected. Right. Thank God for FaceTime and Zoom and all these things that we can use. But it's made me recognize the extreme value of my close relationships and make sure to include those in my weekly, monthly, and every every other goal. And not just as an afterthought, not as like, well, if I finish my work, I'll go out to coffee with Aaron. No, it coffee with Aaron is part of the deal. Totally. It's part of the deal because that's your deal. Because a part of what you want to do, a part of your seven-year vision is that you want to have the absolute best relationship possible with your children, let's say. Yeah. You know? So a part of that, you know, when you take it and you break it down into what's my seven month, what's my seven month waypoint goal? Right. Well, within the next seven months, I want to go to 80% of all of my kids soccer games right okay and then you break that down to the weekly to your weekly vision and your weekly plan and there's a soccer game on tuesday and saturday so those go on there and then when you break it down to the daily plan right on tuesday soccer game you know 6 6 p.m and what i love and this helped me just last week um i'm an avid list maker so as even though i have all the technology in the world you know and i could have every app known to man i'm still i've still got my notepads and my sticky notes and all these things and that's just how i roll so if i don't have the to do on the list it basically doesn't exist now the problem is that that list will have things like you know go to tahiti uh, right underneath um write a post on social media, right? right. Uh-huh. So there's no there's no real organization and it just makes me feel incredibly overwhelmed. So even just this past week, I took what was my list, which was a full page on a yellow, one of those yellow flip notebook thing, jiggers, whatever you call them, from Legal Staples. Pad. Thank you so much. Le- See, it's the, it's because I'm not having coffee anymore. I blame everything on that. Um, my legal pad, and I broke it out into, okay, which of these items are weekly items and which of these items are in the month of December is, is the way I laid it out. Okay. And that helped me so much in terms of my focus because one of the things on my weekly list this week is mail Christmas packages back to the East Coast because God only knows how long it's going to take you know to get there, but that's important because it's my family and th- that you you're the one who gave me permission to put things like that on this list. So thank you. And it, I think my family thanks you. Like well, you. well, you're welcome. And and look, that all that did was just reverse engineer back to your seven year vision goal of I want to have the best relationship with my family as I possibly can. Right. And a part of that to have that really good relationship is to make sure that you know, that they get recognized for Christmas so that they don't feel left out. So then that means, and they, and they feel that you cared enough to send the package earlier because God, we all know that you send the package and it gets there early. Great. If it shows up on the 26th, you're a piece of shit. (laughs) Doesn't matter if the person opens it up and there's a gazillion dollars worth of gold bullion in there, right? Doesn't matter. They just look at the postmark lazy shit sent it out on the 23rd. Listen, my thing is uh, what I always tell people when my gifts get there late is I was just trying to stretch out the occasion as long as possible. So whether it's a birthday or a holiday, I didn't want you to get everything in one day. I wanted you to be able to celebrate for multiple days. (laughs) That's some pretty good bullshit there. (laughs) Thank you. Sometimes it works pretty well. Other times I get dead silence on the other end of the phone and I'm like, I got to go. I think that the ironically, I guess maybe the hardest part of the seven minute setup is the first part. And you've talked about this, that creating the seven year vision has oftentimes led people to tears Yes, for one reason or another. Um, what's your, having, ta- having coached at this point, so many people through the process, what, do, what are your thoughts on that? Why is it so challenging? Why is it so emotional and why is it so important well, it, it's a few different things. The main one that I've found, and Liz, I've coached over a hundred people 
personally on the on the process. Mm-hmm. And the thing that comes up the most is, oh my God, I can't believe that I'm at this point in my life and I still haven't done these things. Right. And that instant, the first time somebody said that to me, or to be honest, the first time somebody cried in front of me while they were going through the process, I didn't know what to do. Like it mm-hmm. made me dramatically uncomfortable and, you know, like I wanted to run. But I realized that, you know, I had to help this person. Right. You know, it, it, this is my, you know, this is my baby. So uh, obviously I've got, you know, when I'm having somebody go through this process, I've got to be there to help them. And I just put myself in empathy mode and then realized, oh my God, okay, somebody's looking at this. And that person was in their mid forties mm-hmm. when they were going through the process. And I simply said to them, I was like, you know, there's a lot of time left on the clock. I don't know. Yes. Are, are, are you like 79 years old? And you're just telling me that you're 42? Like, are you pulling right. off the, uh, a really, really good look? Right. Are you do, Are you pulling a Jane Fonda? Yeah, exactly. You know, it, you know it's like you have a lot of time left, a lot of time left. And think about it. You know, if, if you started today and if you accomplished each and every single thing on that list, and if it took you all seven years to do it, you're only going to be 49. And you'll be 49 and have all those things. So let's not think any more or talk any more about the fact that you're 42 and haven't accomplished these things. Let's talk about the fact that by the time you're 49, you're going to have all of that and more than likely more Mm -hmm. than that. Well, plus that's the quote unquote, and I really shouldn't even be quotes there, but excuse that so many people use to just not do something. So I'm already 42, you know, why start now? Or I'm already 42, right? And it's like, but you're, you're, you're just 42. So you're going to hit 49, God willing, either way. Wouldn't you rather hit 49 with uh, intention and some level of, you know, decision-making on your part in terms of what you want 49 to look like, as opposed to just kind of coasting through. It's, it's like, I was talking to somebody about something a couple of days ago and I, I was referencing 11 months ago and she said, Oh my God, I cannot believe it's already been 11 months since we had that conversation. Yeah, And it's good. like, yeah, I, I know. I mean, Imagine if you had just stuck with the knitting (laughs) and this is me talking and you know where I stand on home improvement projects and getting things done, but it, it does make sense. It time's going to go by anyway. So why aren't we being more intentional with it? I think, and, and tell me what, how you feel about this. I think that it dredges up. It's kind of like when you're writing a book, you think, well, I'm just going to sit down and I'm just going to write the whole book. And no problem. I've lived it. I've experienced it. I can I can do it. But you get to a point, usually about a, a third of the way through, where something comes up for you. You have an aha moment. You remember something. You realize something. And it sets you back for a minute because you, you think, God, I got to go process that. I haven't processed that yet. Right. And I think that something similar happens when going through the seven-minute setup where when you're figuring out your seven-year plan, you start to recognize where your own limitations are in your mind. And you have to go address that and work with it. You can't really just bulldoze your way through. You have to figure it out. You can't bulldoze your way through and you can't turn around and run in the other direction. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can't, you, you can't do, you, you, you can't do either one. And, and Liz, the things that you just said have me have brought up so many, so many ideas in my head. Number one is that we all have to realize that time is the number one undisputed, undefeated champion of the world, of everything. It doesn't matter. No matter what, time never loses. Time will get you. It may take a little bit longer for time to catch up to you, but at the end of the day, time is the undisputed heavyweight champion of life, of everything, right? And it does not stop. No matter right. what, right? It, look, it, it's it's 43 seconds past when I just started talking. The time is going to go regardless. 
Right. So, so you better get the most out of it while you can before you run out of it. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you get to the end of the road. You get to the end and you have regrets. Well, I read something yesterday that really struck me. It's so simple. I, I know I've heard it before, but for some reason yesterday it, it hit me like a bulldozer, which was at this exact moment, you're the oldest you've ever been and the youngest you'll ever be. Right. Simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, that's been, again, I've heard it many times. It just, for some reason hit me, you know, in an interesting way, because as much as we talk about time being an illusion and all these things. So next up with the seven minute setup is the audio book. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I, you're excited. I'm more excited than ever. I'm more excited about the audio book than I am about the book itself. I, I think I might be too, <laughs> but I don't know. I think they're going to serve two very different purposes. I mean, you and I kind of, well, we both know that there's going to be supplemental content to the audio that I think is going to be fantastic and incredibly valuable and helpful. And so that makes it different. It's, it's not going to be the paperback just in audio form. There's going to be supplemental stuff there, right? But yes. I, I think that this is one of those books that for people who learn, you know, we all absorb information differently. So I have it dog-eared and highlighted and the whole thing. And then when I listen to the audio, I'll take it in a different way or when we create the, whatever it is, right? Um, there are so many, we, we've talked about doing so many different things with this to really help people be able to incorporate it into their life in whatever way best works for them. And the and the audio book is going to bring that to a completely different level. I agree. Completely different. And, and it's funny because I'm very, I personally, I'm very big on audio books. I think that, can, that that's the greatest way for me to consume content like that is audio book. And it could be while I'm driving. It could be while I'm in the gym working out. Sure. Or whatever. And I have heard things while driving or in the gym working out where later on when I have pen and paper handy, I've gone back and re-listened to and taken the and taken hand notes from them as well. That's what I was gonna ask you is what do you do when you're driving? Because the only thing about audiobooks that's challenging for me is I'm a I'm an avid highlighter. So when I'm driving down the road and I'm listening to them, and I do, and I, I do frequently, I'm like, oh my God, I it drives me crazy because I want to write write it down somewhere. You and just that, go back. I just go back because if I know that there was something that was really good in there, either I'll listen to it over and over and over again right at that moment, or I'll listen all the way to the end of the chapter and then start the chapter over again and listen to okay, that chapter okay, again. Sure. Or I will take. Uh, I, I will go back later on when I can, when I'm not driving and, and taking notes could be, you know, detrimental to me living to the end of the day, <laughs> I, I, I will actually go back and listen to that chapter again and write it out. And what's funny is I write the mm-hmm. notes out in my planner, in what I call my, okay. in okay. my seven minute setup planner. I actually okay. take the next page and write out the notes so that I can connect, I can go back Look at the look at the notes and connect the notes to the day that I wrote them and the day that I listened to that content and why and I think back why in the world was that so important to me at that time why did right. that strike me how did how did that piece of content that I listened to from that book or that podcast or whatever it was how did how is that helpful to what I was working on right at that moment. You bring up a really great point with this book, though, and with many books, um, but this one in particular right now, which is that you read it differently depending on where you are in your life. So I I helped you. I mean, I was with you on this whole journey of this book. So I know what the content of the book is. And yet when I went back through it again, starting last week to do my seven-year vision again, I took in some of the different stories and pieces of advice differently because my life is different now than it was when we first worked on this. Right. Everybody's is. Right. That's the things that I didn't identify with maybe as much or things, you know, I now 
strike me differently. And I kind of go, oh, that's hmm, interesting. And it definitely makes me think about things differently. And look, not to toot my own horn or anything, but that, that's <laughs> one of the beautiful things about this process. And that's something yes. that I learned myself, you know? And, uh, you know, it, because Liz, look, back in the day, and I'm the, back in the day for me is like 20 some odd years ago when I decided I didn't want to be a schnook anymore. When right. I had my awakening day and I decided I didn't want to be a schnook, I read just about every single inspirational, motivational, you know, top shelf, uh, top shelf, get your life together, inspirational book that's out there. Yep. Right. And at the end of all of them, and they were all great books I, 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 in no way, shape or form am I saying that they were bad, but they all missed one very, very specified item. Mm -hmm. What the hell do I do now? Yes. Not yes. one of them that I read actually broke down. Okay, now that you've read all of this, now that I've got you all wound up, you know, the tank is full, the the air, the, the air pressure is perfect, you know, the you know, the, the plane checks out, we're all ready to go. Take mm -hmm. off. Uh, wait, whoa, 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 take off and go where? Absolutely. And I say that all the time, not only to my clients, but lately to myself, I say, what is the next best step? That's right. it. Because when you're looking at a seven year vision, right. And you're sitting, let's say you're sitting in your, you know, I'm, I'm in a three bedroom. I don't ever want more than three bedrooms, but you know, I'm sitting in my three bedroom home and let's just say that my vision was to have 18 bedrooms. That feels or can feel incredibly overwhelming. Like, how do I get from this to that? And it really is a step at a time. So instead of getting overwhelmed and shutting down, which is very easy for me to do, and I've been very honest about that. It is, it is, I mean, I'll just go buy a table saw. Like if I can't, you know, figure out what the next best step is, the next best step is always to buy a new tool. Right. Um, but you know, I, I will, I will ask myself or I will ask my clients, what is the one next best step that you can take today? Just one thing that's in alignment with the seven year plan. It has to be in alignment with the seven year plan. Right. And there's nothing that I now do in a day really that isn't right you're because you're living life based on your own agenda not the agenda of right. someone else right and the own and even if you're doing something because someone else needs you to do it by a particular time you're only doing it for that person because it meets your agenda that's correct. And it also, you have the flexibility and the seven month thing has really been transformational because everyone talks about either the year or the quarter. That's all, that's all that people go off of is a year and a quarter. And for, for some reason, that's always felt restrictive to me. And I Absolutely. love the seven month thing. Years it's always a different time of year when yep. I'm reassessing, right? Mm-hmm. You've also, you've gone through enough to be able to re, to reset Seven yes. months is enough time to accomplish some pretty big goals. Yes. You know, and a, a year is too long. Too many things can happen. Too many things can happen. The world is way too fluid right now. There's too, way too many things that could come in. You have all the other, and also the, all the other people that are in your world, they're all working their own agendas. Absolutely. And sometimes somebody else's agenda can <laughs> influence what's going to land on yours. You know, it, yes. it, you bring up the house thing because it's so funny. You know, I br we bring it up in the book. The every single person, no one has missed yet. <laughs> I know you're going to say. <laughs> yeah, no one has missed yet. But every single right. person on their seven year vision, that inside of the one of the top three things that they write is, I want a big house. By the ocean. On the beach. On the beach, <laughs> facing the ocean. Everybody. Yep. Everybody, right? Yep. And then when the person comes to the reality that they live in Wisconsin. Right. Or Nebraska. Or Nebraska. Let's use Nebraska as better. They live in Nebraska and their entire family lives in Nebraska. And they have right. a they have a fantastic business in Nebraska. And the only way that they're gonna have the big house by the ocean is they move. Right. And they don't want to move to Texas or California or Florida or Louisiana or anywhere along the East Coast. They don't want to do it. 
they're like, well, if I move there, I'm going to be away from my family. Right. I'm going to be away from my business. I'm going to be away from all the things I grew up with. I'm going to be away from everything. And then they're like, well, okay, so maybe I don't need that. What do I need? Maybe I just vacation by the ocean for, you know, two months or or two weeks or whatever, a year. Right, exactly. And and maybe at and maybe look, maybe at someone's point in their life, it was that they wanted the big 13 bedroom house. Okay. And then they got to the next point in their life where they're like, you know what? I don't really need that. Maybe they felt that they at the time that they needed the big house to be able to show themselves that they were successful and show themselves what they can accomplish. But then they came to a point in their life when they're like, you know what? I don't really need this. I really need like a two bedroom condo. Right. Because in reality, that's all that's any all of us really needs. need right. is a two bedroom condo. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to get rid of this big house. I'm going to take this cash, put it in the bank. And this is not a downsizing type of thing either. I'm not saying that you've got to be like 63 to think this way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I've seen, you know, I've seen many people in their 30s or 40s get like just like you said before they get the big house and then they're like oh wait a minute the electric bill is the electric bill is how much right right the you know, the gas bill is how much in the winter time well and i love that there's no judgment around it too if someone decides that they want the 18 bedroom house you're not here to tell them that that's wrong no, because at that point, you may need to pick up the 18-bedroom house to be able to substantiate in your own mind or prove to yourself or whatever it is that you need to do because of your personality, your upbringing, your values, what was taught to you, what you think is right, not right. How many you, children you have. I may, yeah. It may, may, hey, maybe you've got 18 kids. Right. <laughs> and you need 18 bedrooms because you want them all to have a, their own bedroom because right. you growing up, you didn't have a bedroom. You shared your bedroom with your, you know, 11 other siblings or whatever. So some people, maybe that's what they want. Maybe that's what they need, but it's not right. going to be what they want or need three years from now. Correct. Eight years from now, 13 years from now. Who knows? That's the beauty of the process is that the process, it allows you to be just as fluid. Yeah, just as fluid as life actually is. I love that. I mean, it's truly, it has truly transformed the way. And I've told so many people about it. And it has struck a chord with so many people because they think in similar fashion, it's like, oh, you know, that, that feels it's, it's something that's malleable. It's not something where you're setting a goal on January one and then come hell or high water, you've got to meet it by December 31. Even if you decide you don't like whatever that particular thing is, the idea of being able to sit down every Sunday or Saturday or Monday or whenever anyone decides to do it, right. Whatever works for best for people and say, this is what I'm going to focus on this week to get me where I want to go. That is so appealing. I love it. I love it. I love it too. I love it. I love it. Iteration too. And like and like I said, that's why I built it that way because I tried it the other way. I tried it with the with fitting my goals into somebody else's mold, so to say. Yes. Right. That hey, every one of your goals, you've got to increase them by X percentage. Right. You got to increase them by X. You know. Sure. Well, Well, what if I could? You know, instead of instead of your number of X, what if I could do 30 X? And what if you don't care about a particular goal that someone sets out? So not to go off on a tangent at all, but I think about, you know, 75 hard, the hashtag 75 hard. And, yes. and that worked for a lot of people and not me, I wouldn't even consider doing it, but it was, you know, it was a great thing. One of the things that I thought about though is, well, what if, um, reading, you know, one of the things I think was you had to read 10 pages a day. If you already read 10 pages a day, maybe you should challenge yourself to do something else. Maybe it's 10 minutes extra with your child or your spouse or something like that. So, and I'm sure that, you know, there are plenty of people who customized hashtag 75 hard to be a little bit more in line with their own life and in line with their own goals. But it's a beautiful thing when you can look at all these areas and kind of customize things for yourself and take into account the people and the things that are in your life, not, not what you're being directed to do. Right. And look, 75 hard, the seven minute setup, all of these things, they're all beautiful. 
they're all beautiful, but they work all for because of one thing, because they are a process. Right. Because they're a process. On this day, you do this. On this day, you do this. On this day, right. you do this. Okay. You know, seven minute setup gives you the ability to make it so that it is your goal from beginning to end. The, so that you can change it, so that it, it's as fluid as your life is. It's as fluid as life in reality is. Because God, if we haven't, if it hasn't been proven to us that life is fluid and it can change on a dime, it yeah, will not be proven to anyone. I don't know what else is going to prove it to you. <laughs> I, I don't know what could happen. Jesus comes back, rides down on the white horse, the whole thing, and he's going to. Nothing would surprise me at this. I could open my front door and there could be two unicorns sitting there, and I would literally just go, okay, uh, where would you like to sit? <laughs> yeah. You, know, you want to come in? I mean, are in? you hungry? Do you guys even eat? Thank you for this because this is has been life altering for me. It's going to be life altering for so many people. It's just another tool for people to try. And as much as I hate being like, here's another tool. The bottom line is if everyone had the tools that worked for them, no one would need, no one would be excited about something new. Right. So I think people are trying to take bits and pieces. And I've done that for years of different approaches and say, Hey, what works best for me? And this is undeniably what works best for me. And I cannot wait for the audio to come out. It's soon, and I cannot wait either. I cannot wait because I know it is going to change lives. I, th there's not a day that goes by, Liz, and this is fantastic, and I have to thank you for this, okay? There is not one day that goes by that somebody does not reach out to me. Somebody does not jump into like one uh, into DM on Facebook or Instagram or, or wherever, and they don't say, I've read, you know, I'm reading the book or I've read the book or I'm working the seven minute setup or this or that. And it's what either it's my favorite book. It's changed my life. I've had people come up to me crying, saying, you have mm -hmm. no idea it, it, what a pleasure it is to meet you. You have no idea how your book changed my life. I'm going to grad school. The reason I work here is because of your book. Do you know? And the thing I, I, I do know 100%, and the thing I want to say is I remember there was a day, and this happens with every single author, there was a day way back when when you were like, Liz, do you think anybody will read this? Yes. Do you think or anybody care. will? Yeah. And you said if one person, how many people have to care to make it worthwhile right. doing? And I was like, well, right. one. And One. it's so far surpassed that. And it's just continuing. I, I, got, mean, a, I got a message today, 1123 this morning. Started your book finally two days ago, 50 pages in, and it's already my favorite. Love it. I love that. Don't you love that? Absolutely. That's what that's the reason for doing this because God in heaven knows, you know, ain't gonna retire on the proceeds of the seven minute setup. That's for sure. Right. You know, because anybody, anybody out there who thinks that you're going to write a book and it's going to put you on easy street, it, it, it's it, the, it, it's not, you're not Michelle Obama. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to sell 40 million books. I hope to God right. that you do. But if you're not right. in the tens of millions of sales in books, it, it's, you know, it, it's going to be tough. And we should, every author should, who writes a really good piece should get there. But the point of it is that you you do this to help others. You do this so that other people can learn from your mistakes, so that they can learn what you know and that they can grow the same way that you grow, that you grew. It's about putting it back out there for everybody else. At least for me, that was my whole thing. Oh, for sure. And there's a ripple effect to it that you'll never even recognize. So you have people who are reaching out to you directly and saying, you know, Frank, thank you so much. This has changed my life. This is remarkable, et cetera. What you don't get to be privy to, unfortunately, but I think it's kind of magical, is that when someone in their life says to them, gosh, I'm really stuck. I don't know how to set up my time. They're going to say, well, let me tell you about this, this process that I learned, the seven minute setup. And it's just going to keep going in that way and have this ripple effect outward that you'll never even know about. And, and like, what a beautiful thing. What a beautiful thing. What a beautiful gift. I mean, it's just... What a gift to be able to help so many people like that. And, you know, because I don't necessarily need to know. 
I just need to I just need to put it out there and let it do its own thing. Allow it. Just allow it. And I say that all the time. There's a difference between using your book and allowing your book. And it's about allowing your book to do whatever it's going to do, both in your life and in the lives of the people who consume it. Right. And Liz, that process took me out of bankruptcy twice. Yep. It took me out of, you know, no money. It took me out of eating spam. It took it, because yep. I had to. It, right. it you know, it, it took Do you ever choose does one ever choose to eat spam? I don't I mean, I'm sure somebody, there's some people out there that absolutely love spam, but, okay. th- and spam is really just the metaphor, you know, in my case, it actually was spam, the right. quote unquote meat, but <laughs> in, sp- the can, right. in the can, which I, which I keep a can on my desk 24 yep. seven, because it reminds me of those times and keeps me working hard, and keeps me moving forward. But, right. but, 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 but. That spam is really just a metaphor for anything. It could right. be the fact that you had to ride the bus to work and you hated riding the bus. It could be that you had to work for this one jerk off person who was mean and never appreciated you and tried to rip you off on your pay and all that type of stuff because you had to feed your children. Right. You know, it, it the spam is just a metaphor for not having the freedom to do or eat or be Yes. Doing what it is that you want, you want to do, whatever you want. And, and far be it from me or anyone else on the face of the earth to tell you what that thing is. Correct. The only thing I will tell you is that, and the, because it's happened each and every single time, and especially to myself, but I've seen it happen to others, whatever it is that you think you want today, what you just thought in your mind, you knocked yourself down. You could do more. You could do more. You could have more. It could be bigger. It could be grander. It could have more zeros at the end of it. It could have more hugs and kisses attached to it. It can have more of whatever it is that you want. But the only way that you're going to actually believe me and realize it is you've got to start working towards that first thing that you thought to yourself, when I thought to yourself, whatever it is that you want. Right. If once you start working towards that, you suddenly realize, oh my God, I could do so much more. Right. But I just, and the reason that you never ever thought that way before was because you didn't have the process, but now you do. You didn't know how to get from point A to point B. Right. You had no, you had no clue and everything looked like a mountain. Everything. Well, for sure. For is it sure. right? But that's how you climb a mountain, one step. At, I mean, unless you're me, then you just don't do it at all. But one step at a time, right? Well, if it's you, you, you go know. by it, or you go by a table saw. Oh, right. <laughs> I build a bunch of steps to climb the mountain. Yeah, or a Makita drill or something. Just like that. unbelievable. Um, you're remarkable. Thank you so much for doing this. I cannot wait to get the audio out. I can't wait to see the paperback and the ebook travel further and. Whatever comes next for the seven minute setup, because yeah. it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes. And look, don't wait for the audio book. You're going to want the hard copy. Grab the hard copy yourself. Seven minute setup book.com. Seven minute setup book.com. Sold exclusively through Amazon. Go get it. You're going to love it. Just fair warning it is going to change your life. <laughs> so if you don't want your life to be changed, then then don't buy it. You're not, I don't even think you'd still be listening, but correct. Don't Probably buy it, more than likely right. not. Or buy right. it. Or if you're good, buy it for somebody buy else for whose life else. is a freaking mess. That's the truth. That's the truth. It's a great gift. I mean, we are coming upon the holiday season. So. Absolutely. And their life doesn't even have to be a mess. It's, I mean, if they're, if their life is a mess, this is great. But if they're looking for focus, if they just don't feel focused, if they're just not sure what's next, especially after all of this. If they know that they can do more. If they know they can do more, but they don't know how to do it. Yes. This is the answer. This is it. This is it. Yep. You're great, my friend. Thank you, Liz. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, this is your friendly reminder to like, subscribe, and share so we can keep getting the word out, pun intended. And if you're looking for a fun, productive workshop to get your book written, I invite you to check out my newest free on-demand book writing workshop, 
as well as a slew of other book writing and publishing resources over on my website, publishaprofitablebook.com. Again, thanks so much for joining in, and I'll talk to you again soon.